The trial of John Peter Zenger was a definitive moment in the history of American media. Zenger was a printer who was accused of publishing libel against the government. Arrested in 1734, Zenger laid the groundwork for what would later be considered freedom of the press. Hundreds of years later, the trial of John Peter Zenger is recognized as having established the legality of American media criticism of the government. Zenger's story is a story of shady motivations, corruption, the media, and the law. But it is also a story of one man who changed the course of American history with his defiance and his stubborn adherence to his principles. His tale begins on October 26, 1697. Thirteen years after his birth in Germany, John Peter Zenger and his family would set sail for America. By his fourteenth birthday, young Zenger, who went by his middle name, had lost his father but won an apprenticeship with William Bradford, the only printer in New York. During his teen years, Peter Zenger worked for his mentor before tying the knot and moving to Maryland, but the early 1720s saw the death of his wife and his return to New York and Bradford's employ. In 1722, he married fellow German immigrant Anna Catherine Mullen, who would be his wife and business partner until his death. In 1726, Peter and Catherine started up the New York Weekly Journal. When William Crosby took over as governor of New York in August of 1732, he was met with criticism from the Zenger camp. Zenger and his colleagues at the Journal criticized Crosby for his blatant corruption and unquenchable thirst for power. In September of 1734, an article in the Journal accused Crosby of violating the rules of his office. That November, Zenger, who could be held accountable for what the Journal had printed, was put behind bars. Zenger spent 10 months in jail. In the summer of 1735, Andrew Hamilton, a local lawyer, took on the Zenger case. In August, Hamilton went before the court to argue that even though what Zenger printed was reproachful of the government, it was legal because it was the truth. The jury bought his arguments, and Zenger was freed shortly thereafter. In 1746, Peter Zenger died. His wife, Catherine, continued to run the New York Weekly Journal until handing ownership over to their son several years later. Gouverneur Morris, a contributor to the U.S. Constitution and a state senator from New York, called Zenger's trial the Journal of American Freedom, the morning star of that liberty which subsequently revolutionized America.